Hello and welcome to a game between OGS TOP and OGS MC. This is GG Your Face and this game is going to play on Zelnaga Caverns. This of course is game number 4 in a best of 7 series. So whoever wins 4 games will be number 1 and whoever does not will be number 2 which is not so bad. Both these players are awesome player and what OGS MC is talking about is the force fields that he placed in I believe game number 2 and 3 because some of them were slightly off and by off I mean they didn't really cut off his opponent's forces in a half, a quarter, or a third, and that's the inappropriate way to look at fractions, but anyway, that is what he means because all of his opponent's units were engaging, and even the ones that were behind the force field, so he wasn't really sort of using the force fields, and the sentries were a little bit of a waste of the 100 gas and 50 minerals. And both these players are going to be really hyped up for this match because one of them is really far ahead and one of them is not really far ahead, and there is going to be a gateway along with the barracks being placed for T.O.P., and MC is going to scout out with that probe after he plays down the gateway. I gotta tell you man, it's really nervous even just watching these games because both these players are so good and there's gotta be one winner, that's the problem with these StarCraft 2 games. You have really great players and then you gotta still crown one and one of them will be the quote unquote loser, which isn't really the case. And there's going to be a gateway and an assimilator and the probe is going to come across here meeting the SCV tour his side of the map and more and more SCVs are being pumped out at the moment and the barracks is about done. At the same time, the probe for... MC is going to come inside the base and he will see that his opponent has recently put down three of those SCVs into the gas production. In the meantime, the SCV is coming to the bottom of the ramp for TOP into the base of MC. He will also spot the Cyber Core and it looks like this round he is not going to go for an early gas. I think in games 2 and 3 he did go for a slightly early gas and he was trying to do some sort of tech build. Ooh, he is going to get the gas once again. I think this is a... Uh, optional choice a lot of players do like to get that gas later but it seems that he is going to go for the earlier gas this time once again and the orbital command is complete and there will be a mule bam right there and there is also going to be some marines the marines actually walked around the edges of the map to look for any pylons it is sort of annoying you can do it in a slightly lower league what you could do is you put down some pylons and you just massively zell out the poop out of them while they're trying to spawn some units and you're spawning directly in their base and that's what he was looking for there of course probably not against zealots but just pylons in general for any cannons or anything that is not the standard play and here we see stalker along with the warp oh not stalkers excuse me sentry is coming out of the gateway and the warp gate is being produced and this scv is going to go into the middle of course you can say that you can grab the pros and just attack that scv but the scv can always just pick up and right click on a mineral patch somewhere and go right through your units which will make them feel kind of silly two marines out on the field along with the marauder and the concussive shell is being researched at the moment and the sentry is going to come here and the scv will still continuously dance around and there's another orbital command i mean another command center coming out this player TOP really does like to expand early especially against Protoss and he is going to lose or not lose the SCV the SCV is really close to death probably will die there and he does not spot the two gateways that are currently being open on the side here and he is going to be early expanding once again I suppose MC would be expecting this but then it's hard to say because they're really good friends and they're great competitors and they've played a lot of each other so they might try to do something that the other one is expecting and not do it or do it anyway just for chuckles and there is going to be a probe running away from the Zelda Watchtower and the Marines will take control of it. The army size is going to be at 35 versus 30. There is two Marines, two Marauders and those two Marines are just checking out the edges of the map. There is one Marauder stationed on the west side of the natural expansion. There's going to be one Zella and one Sentry, two Sentries in fact, coming to check out the natural expansion of his opponent MC and it looks like he is going to fall back seeing the Marauders there. Three barracks being opened at the moment for TOP. He's going to have a total of four barracks, one of them already with a tech lab researching the combat shield for those Marines, giving them the plus 10 HP. There is going to be four sentries for the Protoss, six sentries actually total, and there's going to be one Zealot and 28 probes versus 24 SCVs and the second gas is going to come online momentarily for the Terran player TOP and ooh, this is a very very careful game by both these players both players are scanning around the map making sure there is nothing where it's not supposed to be and the orbital command center is going to head outside and I'm pretty sure he is going to move his forces outside as well and I think this probe will be able to spot it we do see a robotics facility being being built currently by MC as he is going to lose that probe there and the CV does return upon scouting I believe the Nexus for his opponent so he does know the Nexus is also going up I think they're a little bit more careful now because this match really has a lot 
um, to tip the balance of this game, or sort of not the balance, I should say. I don't really want to spoil it, but in any event, the army size is going to be at 51 against 46, and he is going to watch the watchtower once again. This is a really tense game. Both these players are building up quite a bit. There's a total of four barracks, and there's going to be one, two, three gateways, and there only seems to be three gateways at the time. He does have a lot of probes collecting a lot of minerals. The income tab does reflect that he is not in the lead, whereas the uh, Terran player is in the lead. He does have those mills to call down regularly. Both players are going to be on two gas, and no one has yet opened the third gas. More and more Marauders are being built, and all of these are going to be, all, all except one, are going to be Tech Lab, so he is going to be making a very Marauder-heavy army. He is still not getting the third or the fourth gas yet, and let's take a quick look at the unit composition. We see eight Marines and eight Marauders versus one Immortal, three Stalkers, and six Sentries with four Zealots. Pretty sizable force for both players, and we do see the Robotics Bay going down. We might see a Colossus really, really soon. There is a Factory. Factory is very useful, as it does allow you to build a Star and the starport will be able to let you build Vikings, Medivacs, and also other courts. sorts of funny things like is that thing a oh that's that, that's an SCV and there's going to be Marines and Marauders and the third gas is being opened at the moment and he is going to come across this is a very tense situation. I don't know if you guys can feel it, but I can definitely sense that both these players are not wanting to be the first one to step out of bound, and both these players are just moving back and forth now. They are trying to think of a way to engage that will be advantageous for each of them, and this probe is going to go down. Units lost tab is pretty much that even 50 against 100. It looks like a huge gap, but it's really not. There's an observer flying toward the base of... T.O.P. as T.O.P. is going to take down the gold expansion. Perhaps he's thinking about expanding once again. He is going to be building another command center just directly to the west of his location. There is an observer coming in to check out his opponent's forces and I think both these players are going to play a relatively safe game going to go for a very very large army. There is a total of four barracks and one star per one factory. The factory is going to be getting a reactor and a command center for the Terran player where as the Protoss player is going to have a total of four gates now and he is also also going to have a Colossus relatively soon, I assume. Colossus, along with Thermal Lands, is being researched at the moment, and there is an Observer flying about. The Observer does spot the factory as well as the Starport. I believe the Starport had to lift to go up, so I assume he saw it. And there are some Marines and Marauders stationed at both the expansion over here for the Protoss player, as well as directly outside the base, and he also has control of both the Watchtowers. But of course, the Observer is cloaked, and he is flying about, and he is getting lots of information for his opponent. And both these players' APMs are relatively low at this moment. I think there's a lot of thinking going on, not so much fighting and there is going to be the first Colossus out for the Protoss player as his size sizable army just got a little bit stronger. He really needs that Thermal Lance to finish before he, he engages, but there is going to be eight more seconds of peace, I think, and some of these units are coming from the side. There's going to be six Marines directly east of the natural expansion for the Protoss player, and the Protoss player is going to push up ahead here. He does have... The Observer, I'm not sure if T.O.P. saw the Observer and just decided to let his opponent come, but he is going to come in here from the side. His Marines are coming in. He will be able to get some probes killed as the main army is not going to engage. The main army is going to come back. He doesn't have, have an Observer over the other army. And he does kill off about, I think, five or six or maybe even seven of those probes with the main army is forced back. And that will allow Terran the time to span, expand to the gold expansion. Great play there. Sacrificing only six marines to get that gold expansion up and running. A very, very nice distraction indeed. There is, of course, going to be a planetary fortress planted at the gold expansion. Of course, there is also an observer catching a glimpse of what's going on inside. He does scan, but he misses. Ooh, he does see it. It's at the very edge, or does he not see it? No, he doesn't see it. The Observer is right there. Oh, just barely escapes the vision of the scan. That's always very exciting to see. And there are some Stalkers and Colossus working on the side because he knows his opponent is going to be on three bases. The income tab does reflect a huge difference. Differential in terms of minerals for the Terran player as he is going to be on the gold and he also has a mule on the gold expansion. And the Protoss player, MC, is going to be making the Templar Archives, possibly getting some of those storms. Storms do really well against... Marines, but not so much against Marauders, and I think his army is very, very Marauder heavy, so Marauders and Vikings very, very good against Stalkers and Colossus, not so much great against those units that are not armored. And we will see some sort of engagement. The Observer is still there. That is, this is just really good positioning for the Observer, getting a glimpse of everything. There's also a probe on the side here. There is a total of 
four barracks. All of them are going to be making marauders, it seems. And the starport is pumping out those Vikings nonstop. There's a total of six Vikings, or seven, that is, seven Vikings. And both these players are pretty happy at this moment, I assume, because no one's really attacking. The army size is at 132 against 158, but of course that can change at any time because he could open up lots of gateways or just storm really well. But the storm is not going to be too much of a factor in this game, I think. The Zealots really need charge. They don't really have charge yet. The charge is being researched along with the storm. Both will finish momentarily, and the Protoss player is going to have an attack from the Terran player momentarily, I think. Both these players are being really, really careful, not really willing to invest and commit and the scan goes off I think he will like what he sees he sees only three colossus that is a lot of Vikings those Vikings should be able to take on the colossus and the stalkers are trying to move to, to deter those Vikings very nice play there for both player and some of these units are spreading out to prevent him from getting stormed on top of everything and that is a lot of marauders there is a total of 39 marauders and only six marines whereas there is 11 Vikings and there's more and more barracks barracks will allow him to replenish his units quicker and there's only going to be six gateways and wow there's only six gateways I think he needs more gateways for this fight both players are not poor not by far they are just waiting and trying to check each other out constantly to make sure they have the right unit mix for when that big fight occurs and there's going to be ghosts and the storm comes and he will storm but he will not get any kills storm does not work great on marauders they're great on marines however and the vikings are coming in trying to hunt for the colossus might be able to get a few shots off the colossus here and the stalkers will move to protect the colossus more gateways being opened up maybe he heard me or maybe Maybe that was his game sense and the observer is going to spot the units moving back but at this moment even though nothing is happening the Terran player does have a lead because he does have the gold expansion and his income is going to be much higher than that of the Protoss player and the Protoss is going to expand to the lower right hand side in the meantime there's a huge army moving out there is a lot of movement but I bet you the Terran player is really happy because he just has to sit back on his goal and prevent his opponent from taking the goal, which is what he's doing. And he does EMP that Templar. Templar does not have Storm. Another Templar comes in, does Storm, but does not get any kills there. And he has wasted the energy. And I think he is thinking about moving in here. He is going to... Ooh, that was a good Storm, I think. And he's pushing the Archon forward. There is some engagement on the side as I think some of the troops were misrallied. And these Templars will die, but they do manage to kill off only one Marauder there. And he is forcing the cancel on this Nexus, which is not what he wants to do because MC is already behind and TOP is going to lose some Marauders, but that's quite okay. He has baited out the Colossus and the Stalkers are going to come over to cover the Colossus. Great, really, really great play there. And the Nexus is going to go up. Another Command Center is going to go up on the opposite side. And the and the Terran player is actually well ahead by one gold expansion. We'll be getting another one. And he EMPs all the Stalkers. Stalkers are falling back and the Marauders are coming forward. The Protoss army is caught off guard. He has a big chunk on the right hand side. He does one storm, not really killing too much. He does take down one Marauder. And there is going to be a huge engagement here, perhaps. Vikings coming in from the north side, sniping one Colossus almost immediately. Second Colossus going down really fast. The storms are going off. Force fields are going off. There is a lot of redundancy in those force fields. And all of the Vikings have taken down all of the Colossus. And the forces of the Terran player are falling back. But he has gotten a lot of damage off on the Protoss army. And the Terran players are going to land here. We'll take down all of these probes and prevent his opponent from getting income and this is a really good play the Terran player is absolutely controlling the income and controlling the map at this moment he is going to have a bigger army he is going to have a bigger income he, he needs to not make any mistake and he should be able to take away this game from his opponent and the Vikings are flying away now and upgrades for both these players are going to be 0-0 zero, zero. they're massing an incredible amount of units the infantry are going to have the 1-1 one, one. and the ground army for the Protoss player MC is not going to have any upgrades at the moment but he does have one observer in a really good location and we might see another engagement here and the Marauders stem and they run up and they're going to eat a storm, one storm, but that's not going to hurt too much. Only about a third of their HP are depleted. EMP goes off on almost nothing there. I think another EMP goes off catching only the only the Immortal it seems and he's going to have a lot of energy and those energy will be able to take down the Templars. There is a group of units flying about the map and those are just Vikings hunting for any Colossus and Blink is being researched at the moment as these Vikings are inside the base of his opponent. There is going to be some sort of a conflict here and a scan goes off catching a glimpse of the Protoss army and the Vikings have landed and oh no they've unpowered four of those gateways now the Protoss player only has four gateways remaining there's a total of eight but there is going to be no power and he is going to be in trouble here the army size is at 
181 against 190. He is going to need to answer this because he cannot really replenish his troops quickly. And he is going to come in. A lot of Zelots are getting into the face of those Marauders. Force fields are preventing those Marauders. Good storms coming off EMPs. Just great plays from both these players. Meanwhile, the Chaos is going to unfold inside the base of MC. He is going to lose those pylons. And he can't really replenish his, the army as quickly as his opponent. He did win the main fight at the middle of the map but inside of his base there is trouble a brewing he has lost power to his pylons and he has lost power to the gateways he can't really replenish his troops as quickly he is trying desperately to come back in his base and defend and he's putting out more and more gateways which is exactly what he needs to do but the Terran player P.O.P. is in a commanding lead here. He is also trying to take down Templar Archives, preventing his opponent from making any more Templars and the Zealots are charging in with their charge but the Moiris will be able to get into corner, and oh no, they've taken down the Templar Archive as well. At the same time, the Terran player is also going to come into the National Expansion and take down pretty much the new source of income for his opponent, and he, if he takes down this Nexus, he might be able to take the game here. He does take down the Nexus, and he is going to fall back. No, he's not going to fall back. He is going to fall back now. The army size after that. 2-3 huge engagement is going to be 138 versus 161 leaving the Protoss player a little bit more wounded than the Terran player because he ooh, he still has one warp gate unpowered there he really needs to put it down another pylon he has enough money but maybe he just forgets and he has those gateways up and running but his income is much much lesser than the Terran army and the Terran army for T.O.P. is going to push out here. He does have the 1-1 one, one upgrade. He is going to get the 2-2. Two, two. The Protoss army only has 1-0. And if he can get an EMP on these Archons, he will make really quick work of them. And once again, ensuring his opponent is not going to expand to the gold expansion. This is a really good play from the Terran as well as the Protoss. But more so for the Terran player because he is going to be able to control the map. And a drop is going to occur. There is a lot of Marauders and I think one Marine inside. And forcing the Terran the Protoss army back into his base and he's going to take down these pylons and he is going to be able to run away he did not lose any units that time I believe he even keeps all of his medevacs alive and this is if he hiding on the side here near the expansion where there is no mining occurring because the Nexus is not currently up there's going to be a cloak a scan goes off he is going to try to take down this Archon and he will be able to it is 2-0 upgrades versus 1-0 I mean 2-2 upgrade versus 1-0 and I think he actually missed the EMP there some units are going off to the side. He's going to try to take down this Nexus again. While the main army is coming in here. He is going to EMP. Good EMP there. And more forces are going back. And he is going to go back. And a storm goes off on the own Archons. Oh no. Storm going off. Catching only some of the ghosts. And I think he is going to be able to take it here. As he's getting closer and closer. And some storms and some EMPs are going off. But I think the EMPs are done more damage than the storms. And he should be able to possibly hold off here. He has lost the Nexus. So MC has lost the Nexus and the medevacs are coming here dropping off some units will be able to tip the tide of this battle perhaps but he has really won a huge battle on the lower right hand side where he has taken down the nexus but of course the Terran player is going to lose some of these units as he's falling back and at the same time he is going to come in here and unpower three gateways once again great snipe there on that pylon and he is going to get stormed and he did get stormed there, but he is not in too bad of a shape as more and more units are going to pour forward here. And OGS MC will have to GG because he simply does not have those gateways to replenish his units. And that was a really great game, really great series. Hope you guys enjoy that. If you don't know, this is uh, TOP have taken the thingy, the championship. And if you have not seen games one and three, stay tuned for game number five. Wink. See you guys at the next game. Later.